All right, well, welcome to the next installment, number five. Episode of, number five. Episode number five of the Heroes Journal podcast. If you guys have been listening, thank you so much. We love doing this. We love talking to each other. Something that we do anyway. So I'm glad that we're finally filming it and recording it because it's kind of fun to uh, bookmark where the business is at and kind of, you know, have these conversations that I think we typically, like, this is nothing out of the ordinary for us. Yeah. So I'm glad it, that we have something. Yeah, it's weird. It's like playing to your strengths. I think that there are a few things that we've had to stretch ourselves with, um, with growing the business. But this is definitely one of the things that maybe comes more natural to us. It's probably like the, um, you know, have you ever heard got the advice about like an easy A, you know, like follow in life, like you should you should follow the jobs that you got an easy A in school in. Like, I've never to, heard that. Yeah. So someone was like, if you if you got an A in marketing, and other people got B's in marketing, and it was like relative, it came really smooth to you. That's a good indicator. You should probably go into marketing. So the, like a podcast. I've never heard that. I've uh, never gotten an easy A either. That's probably why. Yeah. And I, I, actually, I actually contend with that point a little bit. I think that there's there's multiple layers to it. It's like, mm. anyways, you, you follow the class that you got to be in, but you loved. You don't follow the class you get an easy A in, but we're like, whatever about, right? So uh, that, that's the, that's my like that's layer to it. That's the Kyle version of the yeah. quote that I've never heard before. Exactly. So now you're getting two <laughs> new quotes. Anyways. Okay. I, we digress, but that, that's that's the point about the podcast. Speaking of quotes, I wanted to hear your thoughts on a quote that I had just heard in an interview yeah. like an hour ago. Mm -hmm. And this is the quote. I know you've heard it before. It is, it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Do you want to ask any questions or do you want my just initial thoughts? Initial thoughts. What do you got? Um, so I'm like, a, I'm pretty, I'm a pretty big Malcolm Gladwell fan. And I, that, I feel like that really falls in line with um, like the 10,000 10, hours thing. Um, it's, it's actually something we've talked about a lot um, that I think about all the time is like, when is the right time to get bigger? And what like, and blow up is, is, a, is a pretty arrogant term, but like get to a point where you're doing a lot more than you are doing right now. And how being prepared for that moment is extremely important. Um, so it's like, my, my first thought is who's it for? Who's the 10 years for? Is the 10 years for like, it's just that's how long it takes to make something good enough that people will be really excited about it? Or is it the person wants to work for 10 years, get everything in place so that they can handle the amount of influx of attention to be the overnight success, right? So like which which side, which side, I th I'm probably on the latter side. I think that, I think that more is more inspiring. Um, I don't yeah. know where you stand on that. I, I mean, yeah, I, I think I mostly agree with the latter part of it. I, um, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's kind of like the hero's journey in an interesting way where, you know, the hero has to go through X, Y, Z before they can really hit that moment where they change, where they become the hero, you know, um, not to tie everything back, but I do think of it that way. Like if you were to become that overnight success, truly overnight, without that 10 years of preparation and failure and like, you know, um, resilience and stamina and, you know, keeping yourself healthy and keeping yourself mentally healthy, conditioning yourself really for that moment, then you'll crumble. Like you'll fall apart, you know, as good of a thing as it is to become an overnight success. Like if you don't have the infrastructure in your life in your business or whatever you're doing, your creative work, it's hard to, it's hard to be successful again, I think is what I'm saying. Yeah. Or, or I think is what I partially believe about what you said. Yeah. I, um, I, I think about this, pretty often. Um, I, I like, I really, I think there's, there's two parts of my personality, right? There, there's the part of me that wants to be like special and wants to be like a boy wonder. Mm -hmm. I would love to be like a 20 under 20, a 30 under 30, right? Like that, like that, that's like, there's, there's a vanity side of me that really likes that. Yeah. But I think the other part of it is like, I would love to be the person who failed through their twenties and thirties and no one can beat them in their forties because mm -hmm. they learned every single way to fail. They're like, they know all the ways not to do something. It's the Thomas Edison thing about building a light bulb, but it, w it would be like really, it'd be a really interesting article, right? It's like how many people on the 30 under 30 list are on the 50 over 50, right? Like mm -hmm. how many people are able to, to, to span this level of success. Right. Um, and are able to foster, um, success and whatever that means in a way that it has longevity to it. And I think that's what that means. I think that's why like, you would want to have 10 years of hard work or an amount of time of hard work before someone was to say like, you've made it because you want to, you want to know 
you you want to know that you've done the work that that doesn't actually mean that much to you that mm-hmm. you're like an overnight you you don't need someone to tell you you're an, you're an overnight overnight success because you know all the work that's gone into it it's true um did you know what you get if you get overnight success what? without 10 years of work mad imposter syndrome oh yeah it's true it's like i got all the riches i did none of the work and i'm sitting at the top of the mountain yeah and i can tell people people think i'm a fraud yeah it's weird because that's the first thing so because everyone who isn't at the top of the mountain but they're halfway up the mountain yeah they're gonna know yeah they'll look at your base of work they'll look at your content library they'll look at your personal instagram and they can tell like people people will tell like oh this was either worked for or this person just got lucky Yeah. You know, I don't think, you know, that's probably all rooted in like some kind of gross envy that those people have. Of course. But I mean, part of being successful is other people in the same field wanting you to be successful. Yeah. And the way you get there is having the ethos, which, you know, having the credibility of like 10 years of hard work. Mm -hmm. Because that feels good. Like someone that you know is working harder than you succeeding. Yeah. I think it feels good for Mm -hmm. you to be like, you know, they deserve that. Because that's like, because I'm working hard. I know they might be working harder. They got it, so I respect that. Yeah, there's there's a lot of layers to this, right? There's like a ton of layers. I think one of the one of them is the only person that gets to determine how hard you're working is you. Um, like I've had people tell me, like Kyle, I don't know why, like people tell me, like Kyle, don't quit your job to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, like because the, the, there's there there are things that we can see, and there there are it's our um, contact with like our, our heroes and our love for our product and things that people can't understand. And it was like, well, if I had listened to them about whether or not what I was doing was worthwhile, I probably wouldn't like, this wouldn't be the way it is. Yeah. Um, and, th- and it's the same thing for hard work, right? It's like, I'm not going to allow you to dictate how, how hard I know that I'm working. And it's actually probably a better sign if you have no idea how hard somebody's working. You don't, you don't know. Um, I, I would love it if someone was like, oh, Kyle's been lazy for the last 10 years. But in reality, like I've been absolutely grinding and working night and day to make this thing. Cause that's like that. I think that, that to me is like the ultimate sign of like focusing on the work versus like the, the recognition of the work. If that, yeah. does that make sense? I think so. And I think, I mean that, that has to play into the overnight success thing. Cause if everyone knows you're working hard for 10 years, you're not an overnight success. You're more of like someone who like, had one thing pop off when they've been trying a hundred different things. Whereas if someone doesn't know you're working hard and then all of a sudden it's like, Holy cow, that's like, I don't even know what happened. Right. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that that seems more interesting to me of like mm. letting the actual final product show how hard you worked and people like they're able to look at it. It's the iceberg, right? They're able to look at it. It's a beautiful product on the top. Like the hero's journal is a beautiful product. The first thing you see it. Yeah. But then you, you open the intro content. We have really like thought out like uh, productivity ideas and tools. And uh, we, we, we dive into like what it means to be the hero of your own story. And so you keep going and then you actually, you look at the actual story that's taking place and there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of thought and time put into the way the story is. You look at this map, you see all the different names and how e- there's different uh, geographies. And um, I, I always mess up the word archipelago or I can't even say it. Archipelago. Archipelago. Uh, there's just different, like, yeah, there's different scenes and there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. So you continue to, you continue to, to dig deeper into this iceberg and what you realize is like, Oh, they told me 10% of what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. They showed me 10%, the part that, that I needed to see, but really like a a lot of their work and their time has gone to this 90% that is really going to pay dividends for our heroes, not even for us, but for the people that get to end up using this product, it's going to pay tons of dividends for them down the road. Right. Um, which I think is a lot more exciting and it's measurable, right? It's like, I, I can't measure how you feel about the work that I'm doing. I can't do that. I can't ba- judge my life based off how I think that you view me, mm. but I can judge my life based off the work that I know that I'm doing and like the good that I'm doing for the world. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it totally makes sense. I mean, yeah, there, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of layers to it. There's a lot, a lot of ways to look at it. The quote kind of deals with public perception, right? Because like yeah. the overnight success thing, that is yeah. public perception. But I think about it, um, I always, for some reason, the easiest way for me to contextualize that idea is through music for some reason. Um, and I mean like when I'm talking about like artists, right? Emerging artists, because it's such a flooded market, especially with today. 
Uh, you don't have really record labels controlling everything anymore. It's, I mean, they're still there, but it's like you have streaming services and you basically can have, you know, TikTok. Like you have kids that can blow up overnight um, out of nowhere just from like a song they made at their computer mm -hmm. at like 2 a.m. the night before and published, right? So you have this like wild, wild west. Um, because of that, you kind of have like a different analogy, but a, a gold rush of people that are flooding to the market. So you have way more music. You have way more artists. You have way more people trying to punch through the barrier to get someone's attention to become an overnight success. But I mean, there's a, there's a whole nother reason that the saying like one hit wonder, um, it kind of exists, right? It's like, because you could write a song good enough to get you there, but to stay there, which is the important part, right? That's where you really make your money. That's where you really become someone to stay there. You have to continue to do the thing over and over again. That's where the 10 years comes into play, right? It's like, if I know that like someone's been making music for 10 years and they finally get that hit song that comes out, I know they have an entire library to back them up. And I know that they're going to take that opportunity be like very seriously and continue to make hit after hit, or at least they're going to try their best. Those are the best musicians I've seen do it. Um, but like if you, if you get all of it overnight, truly overnight, it's like, where, where's even the motivation to do it again? Mm -hmm. Where's even the, 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 the grind or the, or the, or the, uh, desire to do it again. Right. Because if all you're going after now is trying to recreate that success, what you're really chasing isn't making art. It's not making the thing. It isn't committing to the work. It's the like thumbs up or thumbs down of other people, which is the worst way to operate your life. <laughs> like if you're trying to operate your life based on like, what do you think of me? Or like, do you love me? Do you hate me? You know, like reading through your Instagram comments, like that's like not going to last. It's not going to work very well. Yeah. I also think about like, I agree with a lot of what you just said. I couldn't remember every single point, so I don't want to like just do a blanket. That's right. Um, but most of what you said, I really, I, I can, I can firmly say I agree with. Thank you. Um, but so going off an artist, so there's this, there's an interesting thing about art and it, it applies to business and it applies to pretty much anything in life but it's extremely evident art. So my, my first thought with the one hit wonder is like, remember Friday, like Rebecca black. And that was huge, right? That was like one of the, it was like massive. Yeah. But I mean, obviously the second it wasn't, song that she made, it was cringy though. Right. Does, but it doesn't matter. Right. It was still huge. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, regardless, like, <laughs> like it, it, it overnight success, right. Is, is whatever you want it to be, but it's still like success. That's Having kind of like what, like 20 million people see your thing. I would say that most people yeah. would say that's success. Anyways, I digress. But like she couldn't make us. It was hard for her to make a second song because of like the the overwhelming like focus on the first thing that she did. But this is the thing I, I, I was really interested in like listening to you talk. And you, you have more of an art background than I do. I'm more of like a it, it applies to sports, but it's really specific in art. This idea that it takes you time to like unlearn your mentor's voice when you're doing something because in art you, you either have like a favorite artist or maybe you're a writer, you have a favorite writer, you have a favorite like poet or whoever it is, you read all their stuff and you end up just emulating what they do for a while. Mm -hmm. you, you need time of like, of actually making these art forms to unlearn someone else's art style and actually learn what it looks like to have your own, your own voice in that space. Yeah. Right. I'm sure um, you've been drumming for what? long time like yeah 15 years and it's probably taken you it probably took you a long time to start drumming like nick right because you were probably thinking of like my the only drummer i know of is like travis barker <laughs> no he's not a, he's not a drummer is he he's a drummer and then or like tommy lee yeah <laughs> yeah there's only two drummers i really like really famous drummers right. but like it probably took you a long time to stop emulating a tommy lee or a travis barker and start becoming like nick vitellaro on the drum set right yeah about 10 and, years Right. And so it's like this, it's this idea of when, when all eyes are on you, who do you want to be? Do you want to be Travis Barker light or do you want to be Nick Vitellaro? Yeah. And so I, I think that applies to a lot of different areas in life too. It's like once you're able to become into your own and become who you are supposed to be in this space, you want to be you. You don't want to be the, your mentor, the person that you looked up to. Right. Because, and you yeah. do it because you love the thing. Exactly. I, I, you don't yeah. do it to be seen as like a certain someone, I guess, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. 
from what I can tell. Yeah. Like, what's like the what's like the you know Kobe Bryant quote where it's like, I don't want to be the next Michael Jordan. I want to be the first Kobe. Be, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, say I think it's the same idea, right? Where it's like, you know, um, you're right. People in sports and in art, they steal for a long time. Yeah. Or they copy for a mm-hmm. long time, and that's that's how you learn stuff. Like that's how humans interact with each other. We just kind of go off what's you're supposed to do. And yeah. I think it's actually kind of funny, like the way. I think I think you definitely see this in art. You probably see it in sports as well. Like the styles kind of change over yeah. time. Like you have different different periods of art. You have like different periods of basketball, right? Yeah, like, like and the you Steph have, Curry effect on the NBA. Right. right. Everyone is shooting like twenty threes a game. Yeah. Exactly. So you like this whole wave of kids that's yeah. like, I'll just learn how to shoot from forty feet away. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's the way to, to play, right? Mm-hmm. Which is kind of funny to me. But 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 you're right. The 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 moment something truly becomes really joyful. And I think the moment that someone feels freedom to like really do something special in the world is when they kind of adopt their own style of that thing. Yeah. But you can only get there after 10 years <laughs> or so. I mean, yeah. this, this is like, there's an yeah. asterisk there. You know, we've only been doing this for what, three years. Yeah. And I, I don't think the best, I think the best is you still yet to come. So me, me too. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying, the only way to really get there is doing the hard work of, yeah. of like banging your head against the wall for 10 years, figuring out what works, figuring out what doesn't work. And in that process of like learning and battling, showing up every day, you eventually just learn that you love playing the drums or you yeah. love playing basketball or you mm-hmm. love running a company or, you know, making products or whatever it is. And so when that day comes where everyone's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Kyle's doing that cool thing. You know, wow, yeah. how did that happen? How did he do it? You're not even, you don't even really care about that. Yeah. You're like, sure. Love me. Hate me. I don't really care. I'm going to keep making products because it's what I love to do. Yeah. And it took me 10 years to figure that out, but like, I know what I do now and, that, yeah. that, and that's what, you know, it's kind of the way I think about it. Yeah. I, I, I think about, think about what a cool way to spend your twenties. So I think we both, we both were done with college at 22. I think I, I guess I technically walked across the stage at like a week before my 23rd birthday. Yeah. So like, I think for us in a, in a way it's, it's not about like 10 years of running the hero's journal. I think it's like 10 years of figuring out how you want to spend your days and how you want to spend your life. Right. So you're coming up on year five, Mm -hmm. right? So you've been doing this for a half a decade of trying to figure out how you want to spend the 24 hours through and through. Not work on the journal. You mean just like just working. Yeah. Life. Post Post school. Yeah. What you like to do. Right. What's like a, what's a, a vocation you genuinely enjoy um, spending your time on. So it's like, that, that's why I think it's a cool experience is because we kind of get a little charcuterie board of opportunities, right? You, you can go over here, you can get a little piece of salami, you can do all this stuff, right? I don't know. Do people put salami on charcuterie boards? So. Okay, cool, that's cool. Good. Yeah. I know there's there's a lot of like really fancy meats that I would mess I'm up. I'm surprised there. you could say uh, charcuterie? charcuterie and not archipelago. Yeah, you know. Char- I can't say charcuterie very well. You know, so maybe you'll just have to say that. Yeah, but that's why we're I business partners. You right. Know? Yeah. 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 We'll just we'll, we'll finish each other's uh, charcuterie. <laughs> um, anyways, so. Yeah, like to me, I'm thinking, OK, the work right now for me as as Kyle, not like as as like a hero's journal person, the work for Kyle is like, how does Kyle like to spend his day? Right. My my goal in my journal is get a win every day. Like feel like I can go to bed like, man, I did a good job today. Um. And there are days where I, I find things that I love doing with the journal. And there's days I, I find things that I don't like doing with the journal. Oh yeah. Um, and it's really important for me to realize like, that's actually like part of that 10 years of work so that I can, I can come out on the other side of where, wherever this thing goes and be like, I know exactly what I like to do. I know exactly what kind of value I can add to someone else. I know, I know exactly how to, I could even be 70 on the other side of this. Who knows? Maybe this is like a, a long-term thing. But I, I, I know what I'm retiring from. I know what I did for the last 50 years, and I'm, I'm excited about that. Yeah. So I, I, I think about that. Like an overnight success for Kyle is like waking up one day and looking back and realizing I've been spending my time exactly how I want to. And like that's success, right? I've treated people well and all that stuff. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah, interesting, right? Like there is because there's because the overnight success thing is very about other people's perception of you. Yeah. I mean, the whole quote deals with that, but there is an interesting thing where it's like you wake up one day and you have this perception of yourself where you're like, I made it, you know, it's kind of interesting. 
I um I remember I wrote this down. It's a, it's like a really it's a really weird thought and it sounds really arrogant, but I think about it all the time. So I, wrote, I went on a run at like noon during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It was like just I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go for a run. I just want to go for a run. I was running. I was listening to music. And I stopped. I just stood there. I was like, I wasn't tired. I just stopped running. And I was just thinking. And I was like, this is probably what like a mogul feels like. Like a business mogul, the person who has all their has all their stuff figured out on paper. It's like, it's not about whether or not you make a lot of money. Because I mean, like our, our salaries are pretty meager. If you looked at our W-2, you'd, you'd kind of laugh at us. But I was like, I'm spending my time exactly how I want to. I, I get to be the person who chooses what, what happens today. Um, and that's probably what it feels like to be like someone who is like one of these entrepreneurs, the Mark Cubans, the Mr. Wonderfuls, right? Those like those people yeah. probably get in. There are other people in their lives who, who realize like they're in their vocation they want to be in and they get to take a moment and they get to realize, you know, I'm in like control of this thing. I'm in control of like life, whatever, whatever it may be or however you want to call it. It's just a really, it was a really cool moment of like, it's not money that makes you a mogul. It's like this overwhelming idea that you have relative control over the things that happen in your life. Um, yeah, I yeah, know it, it's really, it's really spoken to me since then. Yeah. That's I me. Mean, that's been one of my favorite parts about the journal, like on a very basic level, is just being able to make the decisions about my time and, and what I want to do from a day-to-day basis. Like, you know, when you're fresh out of college and you didn't get like a hard skills degree, like you're not going into nursing or like law or something mm-hmm. like you just kind of get tossed into these jobs. Um, they're not they're never terrible jobs, but I think you just learn quickly that it's like this is my life now. This is what I do. Like I go to this place and like I work on this thing for someone else, for this other company, then I go home and it was OK. I mean, I did it for, you know, three years. Yeah, um, And there's and. I don't want to interrupt, but like, there's also a lot, there's a lot, there are a lot of really great things that come out of that. Right. Cause oh, there, yeah. there are a lot of things that are our responsibilities now that I don't want to do, but I know I have to do that. If you work at a company like that, like they handle those things for you. All you have to do is the thing that you got hired to do, mm-hmm. which in a lot of ways is like, that's huge success. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, and then obviously the skills you pick up in you know, doing jobs like that do, they definitely apply to whatever entrepreneurial endeavors we've gone on since. Um, but I think just the concept of like trading my time, you know, in an office for a paycheck didn't really cut it for me. I was like, I, I would rather spend, you know, 80 hours a week working wherever I want on whatever I need to um, and have less free time than like be working on something I'm not truly passionate or care about. And not everyone is like that. So I, I never want to like assume that that's how people operate. I just knew um, pretty quickly that I was like, I'm not going to do this for for a long time. And I respect the people that do, you know, by the way, like I just have happened to, to be pretty disagreeable and pretty like contrarian a lot of my life. And it just kind of followed suit with, you know, the modern workplace. So, so yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've had a lot of, I, I think that our, our view on like the, the, the corporate workplace may be a little bit different. Um, right. Like for us, we have like, we have the most, we have, we have a lot of things we have to do, but we have the most simple version of all of those things, right? Like, um, I really like, I think accounting super interesting. We have like the most simple accounting system you could possibly put together. It's like the most cut and dry. And it's still like a lot for me to manage because it's pretty much just me. But like when you bring in other people, so let's say like you were just genuinely in love with product and that's all you cared about. You didn't want, you don't like anything else. Mm-hmm. Like going and working at like one of these big companies that you've always wanted to work at and being a product person would probably be a, like really a very different experience. It'd probably be very life giving. Um, something you, you got excited about and you had like that agency over because you're able to like, so yeah. So I, I think that, but right now, like no one was knocking on our doors for us to come and help them solve these complex problems. No one was asking us to do these really cool, like right. cool, unique things that like we were really inspired about. So we had to go out and do it ourselves. Mm hmm. But yeah, so I, I, I try, I try to draw the line in my head of like, it's not entrepreneur, entrepreneurship is like the buy all end all in comparison to corporate. It's just the buy all end all for where I'm at in my life right now. Um, and I try to, I, I try that because I like, I'll talk to people who work at corporate job and I'm, I'm genuinely like, man, that's a really cool thing you get to do. 
Yeah. So I, I don't know. I guess this conversation, I'm just trying not to like demonize the other side of it. Other no. Yeah. Way. I don't, I have no like bad blood for people that work in corporate environments yeah. at all. Like, I mean, here's the thing. Like if, if what we do here at the journal, like goes really well, I would love to hire people that have experience at corporate jobs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hire people that are like, these like one-off entrepreneurs like here and there. Right. So yeah. I have deep respect for people that Mm -hmm. work well and work well in organizations and like function as an essential team member there. Yeah. You have to have those people. I just think for sure. us in our early twenties, when it comes to the idea of like, how would we want to spend our time? Yeah. I think that we're both appreciative of the fact that we took the plunge to do this mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you know, keep trying to climb cor yeah. a corporate ladder. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a really unique experience. It's, it's one that I, th I think that I felt more, um, I felt more fear about just like the sustainability of my life in the last, and like that's like going through being a college, like a starving college student. That's like going through like starting off like first job, not making a lot of money. Yeah. Like I have felt significantly more fear in the last 10 months than I've probably felt through all of those things. Like more than like, where am I going to go to college and high school? You know, like, like all of that? these big, all these big moments. Why do you feel the fear? Because it's like, um, it, it's truly the first time in my life where it's like, aside from like, we're, we're really like, we're shouldering all of it. Right. There's no one who's like, can come in and save the day. There's no, yeah. like we have a right. You like, I worked at Papa John's. Someone comes in, they're like, I'm super angry. And I go, Oh, with the manager. <laughs> Right. Cause it's genuinely not my job to handle this thing. Right. But someone knocks on our front door and says, Hey, I'm really mad at you. Mm. You have to look that person in the eye and say, this is obviously a scenario. This never happened, but like, this is obviously <laughs> people don't go into our door. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you, have to, you have to look that person in the eye and you have to say, okay, how can I help you? Right. Right. Like it's, it's on me mm -hmm. to handle this particular moment. And I think it's just like, as you bring on more overhead, like we moved into this, this space to like ship journals. It's obviously more expensive than our previous space where we didn't have space to ship journals. Yes. Um, you uh, start hiring more people, right? We did, we did a list. We like, we work with nine people. Mm -hmm. We give money to nine different people every month, which is like insane, including yeah. ourselves. But yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just like, there's, there's fear as like, if, if things stop going well, like you're letting, you're like letting your dreams down, you're letting people down you're let, like, there's, there's overhead. Like you have all these things you have to take care of that, um, in another environment, you probably wouldn't have to. Yeah, no way. Right. So it's just, it's scary. I don't know. Yeah. I, I felt more fear around the, and it's all good fear, but it's like, I've, I've had to wrestle with the fact that like, that is the state that I live in now mm -hmm. is like understanding the gravity of the decisions that I make versus before it's like, I have a bad, uh, sales call. I just like make another call. Right. Yeah. It's that, that, that's the solution to that scenario is just call another person. Yeah. Um, or you have a bad day. You just yeah. Go home. Exactly. Right. But it's like, we live, this here. is our home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We quite literally live and work in, in the same place. Um, but yeah, I don't know if any of that resonated with you. I just, I think, yeah, I think about totally. these, these things like the lessons that you learn in your 10 years. Of course. Right. Well, and, and as things have been growing, like, that responsibility and that pressure increases um, as it should. Right. And, and I think that like, if you, if you're doing it right and you truly are growing as a company, you're, you're expanding your footprint in the world. You're trying to get kind of noticed. Like that is a hard work. Like that is that 10 year hard work aspect where the pressure is growing. And even you as a, as like a as person that runs a business, like is, has a growing capacity for responsibility. Like you now versus you a year ago, in terms of like responsibility and growth, understanding of the business are like yeah. two different people. Did we talk about this in podcast three or podcast four? We, we had, we had this conversation. Uh, we've, what? yeah, I, I looked, I looked to Bert behind the camera. He didn't know, but we've had this conversation about like how we would laugh at like the problems that we dealt with a year ago. Kind of. That yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, I'm just afraid we're talking. <laughs> we, we, yeah. Talking. Yeah, in it's something some we talk about a lot. Yeah. But in the context of like that being a 10 year window yeah. as opposed to like, Oh, look at last year. I like the idea of like a year from now and then five years from then, like just this idea of like, we'll probably laugh at ourselves doing this podcast. Yeah. We'll probably laugh at the videos we made, some of the business decisions we made. Like, yeah. And that's a good thing. That's what you want. That, mm -hmm. that way, when the overnight success does come, right? Yeah. When you get that knock on your door, 
you're like, okay, I know how to handle this. And yeah. it's, it's, and it's going to heighten responsibility a little bit, but like if that came in year one, it's like, yeah. no way. Yeah. It's, it's funny, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up something that's very business cliche right now. I don't want to hear your, po- I'm going I'm, I'm to monologue for a second, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Okay. So, right. Gary V huge person in the entrepreneurial space, very much like he, he has inspired a lot of people to be more entrepreneurial, to, to strive to be more than what they are. I would say that's, that's generally his platform is like to continue growing, yeah. to continue working, like grind. That's very much who he is. It's funny because a lot of the people who I talk to who listen to Gary Vee are young people, right? It's like people who are either you or I's age or even younger than us. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who really resonate towards the Gary Vee part of things. Um, but it's funny because I don't want to talk to Gary Vee until I'm 40. I want to be able to talk to Gary Vee and be like, this is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. Yeah. Right. I don't want to talk to Gary Vee as a 25 year old entrepreneur because he would look at me and he would say, keep doing the work. Mm-hmm. Right. And I respect Gary Vee because I didn't know who Gary Vee was until he was in his 40s. Right. And I think that's really cool. He's like, I think he's one of the, the like the few that I've seen and that I've watched consistently. Um, who's like not a boy wonder, not like this, this child genius, like did the hard work of like dealing with identity and like vocation issues, like running his parents wine company and then like learning how to pivot that and grow that and, and seeing all the things that go through that. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's kind of ironic that like, um, uh, maybe it's not ironic, but it's like the, 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 the people that are probably consuming most of his content, are trying to find a way to blow up. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and probably in the same way that we've watched his content, we're trying to find a way, how do you make this thing really big? Um, but they're not willing to look at like the 20 years of hard labor work that he did. Cause yeah. I, I honestly like the Gary V content that I don't love is like the, is like the TikToks, the really short, like 15 seconds. Those, those don't, those don't speak to me um, in the same way of like, I don't want to go to Goodwill and flip clothes. Like that's not interesting to me. Mm-hmm making 15 bucks isn't interesting to me in that way. Um, whereas it is, it's great for a lot of people, but like the, the part of the Gary V that does inspire me is like the 30 minute podcast where he talks about, um, where he'll like talk about, um, being working, uh, at his parents wine shop and putting wine in a BMW of a guy he went to high school with. Right. Right. Like in, in, in experiencing that pain of seeing like, someone else have the the momentary success and understanding that like to push and to grind and to grow from there is even though it's painful in the moment, like being able to overcome that, like that, that's why I like Gary V. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like the worst thing I could do is meet Gary V right now. Um, and if Gary, if you're watching, I'll talk to you in 15 years. <laughs> I'll talk to you now. You can talk to Nick, but don't talk to me. I'd love to talk to you now. But yeah, I I, I, want to like, I want to be able to like talk to him and look across the table and be like, now that I've done the hard work of growing this thing and working really hard and figuring things out, like now, like now we can talk as like, you're still probably a mentor, but like more of like a, okay, this person did the work. Yeah. Now I can come in and like, now we can have a real conversation. Like, what was it like to feel? You want to be in the same league as Gary V. Of course. And it not, not like not, um, not on my W two, but as far as like people who can look at each other and be like, we both worked extremely right. hard yeah. to get this thing to get to where we're at. Yeah. I mean, I love to talk to Gary V now, but, um, I think I hear what you're saying. You know, I think it's, there's also a bit of an illusion. Like there's always, there's an age gap between someone like you and Gary V or, you know, insert other person you look up to that's been putting in the work the same way you have. There's always going to, they're, they're going to have the lead because they're older and they've already done it. Of course. Um, so even when you do get to his age, yeah. and let's say that you're just as successful in the things you've been doing. Yeah. Like he's probably going to be still exponentially 20, more still 20 years ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. His, his advice then is going to be don't stop yeah. right now. He's like, get to work. And then like, in 20 years, in 20 it's done. Yeah. yeah. Now it's don't stop. It's like the, it's the Matthew McConaughey thing about like, Who's your hero? Yeah. Me in five years. Me in five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so, you know, I think so. I mean, it's, it's always difficult, like, the, to really know, especially when you have a a situation like Gary Vee where everything is captured or everything is filmed and 
but then but nothing is filmed from those from that 10 years oh that's not true i mean i guess he has like what is it like wine library his youtube thing so i don't know we talk about gary v a lot but i i think that alone is like good evidence of like he was doing something yeah you know um another another example is like this is kind of a hot button issue but like dan blazarian Mm -hmm. um who's like going through some pretty pretty rough legal stuff uh, at the moment He's kind of the other side where he is like he is like all the all the sizzle and like no steak. Yeah. Like there's no evidence, there's no like receipts, there's no backlog of like this is how this guy got to be this way. It's like a vague story of like he played poker and did really well, but yeah. Maybe maybe not. Yeah. It's just like people are people look for that ethos yeah. when they when they see that you're successful. I, I for some reason I think of um who's the dad of um like is it Lonzo Ball? Is that his name? Yeah, Lavar. Lavar Ball. Um, he's like the dad of like yeah. Know, he's like tons of controversy. The ball family, yeah, yeah. Like, I I I put him in the same bucket for some reason because he's always making these outlandish claims about his basketball ability and like he yeah. he, he can beat Michael Jordan one on one or like he scored he like beat the scoring record but like there's like no footage of him playing. There's yeah, no yeah, yeah. like record. Like <laughs> yeah, but it's also interesting, right? Because he said these things about his about his kids, so not yeah. not about himself, but like he was right. Like True. he he yeah. is the first, he is the father of the first two brothers to be picked in the top three. That's right. True, that's like that's that's yeah. evidence, right? So that that would be that would be the, the counter side of your point. He could you can say all you want, but it's like it did it pan out or did it not pan out? To have two of your three sons be the top three pick in the NBA. Right. So maybe it's a little different. Yeah, well, I mean, he's you know he's talking about his sons, but I, I yeah. guess what I meant was like more about his himself, own himself. Because he's like said yeah, some crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, oh, I can do that, you know. And it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. people don't respect that because there isn't evidence. But when someone like Gary V, who's like older, and they're like, no, I put I put in the work. Yeah, you like unlike Dan Blazarian, you can go back and you can find a thousand YouTube videos of him just talking to no one for like ten years. Yeah. And you're like, okay, there is some evidence here. You know, you can pull the receipts. You can look back on that. And that's what I hope this kind of becomes like yeah. over a long period of time. It's one of the benefits of documenting. It's not trying to blow up on the internet right now. Yeah. It's the idea that you have like this, this breadth of work that like once mm-hmm. you get to the top, like and people are like, how they get there, overnight success, you can shake your head and go, nope. There is a thousand blog posts. There's a thousand podcasts. Look at all these videos we made. Look at all these times we like, went live look at all these interactions we have their customers like how dare you say that this happened overnight because this yeah. was i mean this was us sacrificing our 20s to get here right like yeah i i mean sacrificing might not yeah. be the right word but you hear what i'm saying yeah yeah yeah. so anyway those those are my thoughts on your yeah monologue. i agree <laughs> um i think i think my favorite modern example like current or watching it happen live is mr beast on youtube mm-hmm. right like Cause he does, he does the thing where he'll post time capsule videos. Yep. So he, it'll, it'll, a video from five years ago will be like, man, I hope we'll have a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube. Or obviously he's like the biggest YouTuber in the world or something yeah. like that. So, um, he's a good example. He, and it's just like, he, he said what he said, Logan Paul's name a hundred thousand times. He like stayed, he like stayed awake and played like, str- like did a 48 hour YouTube video or something like that. Yeah. Right. He's like, you can tell like he wants it and yeah. people are reciprocating <laughs> that by watching yeah. literally everything that he does. Um, but yeah. 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 YouTube's YouTube is an interesting example. Right. And that's like one of the, that's just kind of the internet in general. Right. Like yeah. There's these long tail receipts, if you will, of like someone growing and getting to the top. Um, I don't think that that really, I don't think that that really existed in the, in the past as much, but mm-hmm. I mean, it is kind of interesting, right? Like you can, and it's fun to, it's fun to be on that train. Like it's, yeah. it's fun to grow with that person and watch them really blow up. Mm hmm. Um, and you know, it's kind of a new thing. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. So we, we're, we're trying our best. So if you're watching this and you're like, man, they're just rambling. We're trying our best to be 45 minutes. That's our goal, right? Podcasts, 45 minutes. Yeah. Is this the closing? This you pivoting into a closing segment. I want to talk about one last thing. Okay. I think we have like five minutes. Um, and it, it's more of like a hopeful thing. It's like, what do you think, and this is a tough, really like, this is a difficult question and you, you may not have an answer for it. Like, what do you think is like, like the, your favorite thing that you've learned through the things that we've done for the last three years or maybe five years since you graduated college? Cause we, we, we did, we did introduce that as like a, 
a length of time. It's probably a whole podcast, but yeah, that is definitely a whole podcast. I mean, honestly, I know we talked about it a lot before. Um, so I hate to be cliche, but I, I, I really do think the whole not letting perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah. Um, it's probably is the first thing that comes to mind for good reason. I know it's not new information. It's not like a yeah. exciting new thing that I've had up my sleeve, but it's like I wake up and I think about that every day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's a lot of the reasoning of that quote has brought the journal to life. The reasoning in that quote has brought us to where we are in the business. The reasoning of that quote has probably helped me quit jobs in the past mm-hmm. um, to bring me to where I am now. So, yeah, yeah, I just I think it's such a good piece of advice for for me and and you know probably anyone in your early twenties. Like you're just you're yeah. kind of no matter what you're doing, whether you're whether you're deep into a career or you're trying to do something you know, off the beaten path or, or whatever. Like yeah. you're just trying to figure out what to do in life. You're just kind of like pounding your head against a wall. Like yeah. you're, you're scratching and, and just trying to figure out what you're going to do. It's really, it's really difficult. Um, and so for me so far, you know, in the last five years or so, that's just been a really extremely important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, it's like, Hey, like just put something out, mm-hmm. just, just dip your toe in the water. Just like give it a shot. And if you hate it, then that's fine. Get out. It doesn't have you don't have to be a rock star at everything you touch. You don't have to be perfect at everything you do. Yeah. Like learn to try. And if you love it, do it. If you don't love it, then try something else. Mm-hmm. That's probably my yeah. One of my favorite things I've learned. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's like kind of like that, but a little bit different. Mine is I think I would agree with that. And so just for the sake of not saying the same thing, um, I think mine is like life comes in phases. And not all and phases don't last forever. Mm-hmm. Um, there were times where my biggest problem was I got off work from working a cold call sales job. And then I would call you and talk to you on the phone for three hours afterwards. Yep. Right. So I was on the phone for like 12 hours a day and my brain was tired. It was exhausted. And it was just like, Oh my goodness, this is ever going to end. Right. So, but understanding that it will end. Right. Mm-hmm. There was a time where it would take us three hours to pack 20 orders. We would, yeah. there was time where I would have an allergic reaction to the actual packing <laughs> supplies. So, um, and it just, and, and having the, the overall like ability to, to, to like pull out from that and be like, you know, this is happening right now, mm-hmm. but this is not going to be forever. Um, and really focusing on that and really focusing on how, how pain and these, these moments of anxiety, how they are indicative of the things that are going on in my life, but they are not a, a constant. I mean, pain and anxiety are a constant, but the things that are causing the pain, they're no, those are not a constant. Yeah. And learning to to live with those things and be thankful about that the lessons that you're learning in the moment. Um, I think that's like something I've had to really focus on. It's like this is just right now. This is not forever. Let's get through this. Let's figure out a solution. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you're out there and you're working on a project that you are really passionate about, and you feel like there's uh, you haven't had the movement that you quite have had wa- had wanted by this time in your journey or you're afraid to start something. Um, it's like, it's all about understanding that things come with time. And sometimes in life, the worst thing that can happen to you is you're really popular right off the get. Sometimes you want, you want to learn the lessons. You want, you want to learn stuff before all eyes are on you. Cause it's like once all eyes are on you and you make a mistake, it's going to feel a lot worse. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's you have true. any final, any parting, any parting thoughts? for us today no i mean you said that really well i you know it's important in life and i think that we've we're trying our best to do this Mm -hmm. figure out the thing that you love do it for 10 years and um it'll it'll be successful yeah (laughs) i don't know if it'll be successful but like just sorry success isn't the right word yeah success define success for yourself what it looks like Mm -hmm. and you'll love doing it no matter what Mm -hmm. and if it just happens to blow up overnight and everyone cares about you one day and then no one cares about it the next day, your love for it will remain the same. It's so true. Whether it's a hobby, you don't have to like, you know, put a price on your hobby or side hustle, whether it's you know a hobby or it is an actual business or it's a job or even if it's like being a parent or mm-hmm. being a coach or something, it's important to find that thing and, um, and just become really good at it mm-hmm. by doing it. So cool. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to do the really choppy 
end of the video thing. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and like the video. Um, we're not going to be too aggressive about that. But yeah, we're not going to like do the smash like button thing. But um, yeah, and if you like our content, whether it's the talking head videos that we do about fandoms, whether it be the podcasts or inside the look at inside look at the heroes headquarters, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on those notifications. We post. We're hoping to post three times a week now. That's like that's a big upgrade for us. So uh, if you want to get on the train and watch all of our content, go ahead and do that. Um, also, you can subscribe on Spotify um, and we're working on Apple Music, right? Yep. Uh, Apple, Apple podcast. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, go give us if you listen to your podcast other places, give us a subscription there. And uh, until next time, I'm Kyle. I'm Nick. See you later. <laughs>